Brooklyn Independent Television. There's a new trend that's taken hold in parts of central Brooklyn these days. You can't wear it or drink it, but it's guaranteed to preserve some of the rich history contained in neighborhoods from development. We're talking about the move by community advocates to landmark hundreds of buildings. Sherry Carabin takes us to Crow Hills Park Place Historic District, which got the green light from the New York City's Landmarks Preservation Commission this summer. Walk through many parts of Brooklyn these days and new development is likely what you'll find. But on this Park Place block between Bedford and Franklin Avenues in Crow Hill, the word of the day is preservation, as these 13 row houses signal continuing efforts to landmark hundreds of unique and historic buildings in the neighborhood. The Queen Anne and Romanesque revival-style homes make up what's known as the Park Place Historic District which the New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission voted to create this summer. Why just these 13? That's what they started with. Someone came, looked, saw that they liked how each one, it was the same row houses, but each top had a different uh, shape architecturally and decided to put that on a national registry first and then went to landmark later. Stacy Shanfi is vice president of the Crow Hill Community Association. The grassroots organization was begun more than 20 years ago to combat crime and other problems in the neighborhood. Since then, the community has undergone many changes, including a shift in the demographics, with the population becoming more ethnically mixed. If you had to pick just one issue right now that you would like to see addressed, what would it be? More services, more sanitation pickup, more mailboxes on, on the avenue. Crow Hill is located in Community District 8, which includes Crown Heights North, Prospect Heights, and Weeksville. According to recent numbers from the Center for the Study of Brooklyn at Brooklyn College, the population of the entire district has grown by about 5 percent since 2000 to over 126,000 people and it includes more women than men. We have seen the white population nearly double in the last uh, eight to ten years or so. Um, this is based on American Community Survey data. Incomes have gone up slightly. Um, when you look at um, foreign-born has actually remained about steady at about one-third, uh, and those who are foreign-born without citizenship status has actually increased. since. The early 90s, we have been seeing an influx in this area of people looking for less expensive rental housing and um, home ownership, people who could no longer afford to live in Manhattan. However, according to statistics from the Center for the Study of Brooklyn, that too is changing, as both renters and buyers face increased prices. What this has meant is new people moving in obviously means that people are being displaced as well, right? And so it's, it's interesting to think about and explore who is moving in, what their demographic makeup is, what their income is, and then who is being displaced, who is moving out of the neighborhood, and then where are they going? I think those are important questions for the neighborhood to ask. Over at the landmarked St. Gregory the Great Parish on St. John's Place in Brooklyn Avenue and Crown Heights North, the Reverend Monsignor Guy Sansrik says he has also noticed differences. We are beginning to have a return of uh, Caucasian, uh, Caucasian population. So a couple of them are seen every once in a while, but it's a very recent new wave. So the congregation is essentially African-American and West Indians. When I say West Indian, it includes Guyanese and uh, Panamanian, a lot of Panamanians. Uh, some from Costa Rica. The transformation of the community has also resulted in a push to landmark large portions of neighborhoods. The driving forces here for landmarking in this part of Brooklyn, central Brooklyn, have been uh, lately, since 2003, the uh, building of the Barclays Center. The incoming stadium drove a lot of um, development in the area. Landmarking efforts in Crown Heights North had a different origin. Crown Heights North 
in its entirety was surveyed by the Landmarks Preservation Commission in 1978. However, they did not have a neighborhood champion at that time to get the landmarking process completed. Uh, in 2001, a group of neighborhoods came together uh, to pick up that survey and move it forward through the landmarking process, and that was Crown Heights North Association. We have a third phase in the works that has had a preliminary hearing, designation is pending, and we hope to be um, mounting a fourth and final phase for Crown Heights North. And at that point, Crown Heights North will be one of the largest historic districts in the city. As these communities continue to evolve, advocates say they're ready for new challenges. Crow Hill is moving ahead with plans to have hundreds of other buildings landmarked. So they too will be around to remind everyone of the neighborhood's rich history. This is Sherry Carabin reporting for Brooklyn Review. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org/bit.